Hello everyone. I welcome you all to your own YouTube channel Java Fun. And in continue with our series about fault tolerance microservices, uh, today we're going to talk about circuit breakers and how to implement circuit breakers in Java. Um, so as you have seen, um, I've created the, the the first video in this uh, fault tolerance microservices say, uh, lecture series, uh, which is explaining the concept of fault tolerance microservices and uh, what exactly is the fault tolerance mechanisms how to implement those what all the libraries available in the market to implement the fault tolerance uh, architecture patterns right so uh, we have gone through um, resilience 4j history sentinel um, how the uh, how the fault tolerance mechanism implemented uh, how what is a circuit breaker how to implement it uh, what is a state machine of circuit breaker all those things i have explained um, so go through that particular um, uh, video uh, you can see it in the i, I button of this particular uh, video or i can put the link into the description box as well so uh, that is kind of a prerequisite so to understand the concepts better so to, to implement the uh, circuit breaker today we're going to use the resilience 4j uh, you can think of it as a kind of an offshoot of uh, hystrix uh, hystrix is created by netflix uh, but uh, it is in the uh, maintenance mode as of now and they're no, no longer doing any further development on it so even if you go to hystrix website uh, they are recommending resilience 4j as a next best technology to use it for the uh, for the fault tolerance mechanisms. So, as to start with, uh, we're going to uh, see how to implement it in Java. So, there are two ways by which we can implement it. First is, first is uh, how we can implement it using plain Java, and the second thing is how we can integrate with the Spring Boot and implement it. So, to start with, uh, let's go with the uh, uh, plain Java concepts how we can implement it in a plain Java so this is my project uh, it's empty as of now there is nothing in this particular class I have one interface and I have one method called as get code so what we're gonna do is uh, we'll implement this particular method in this class and what this uh, class doing is it is calling a code component or a code service and getting a quote for a particular product so that product may be a grocery product or anything so we're going to take example of some of the grocery products the biscuits soap toothpaste and all those things um, i am simulating here the behavior of two microservices where in one microservice let's say an inventory and another is an order microservice so when you place an order order microservice will call inventory microservice to check if uh, that particular product is available in the inventory or not and what is its price uh, so in the first go we'll implement it using plain java in the uh, in the same method in the class and in the second half we'll implement the same thing in two microservices using spring boot okay so this is my maven project uh, in my project i have only one dependency called as resilience 4j circuit breaker and it comes resilience 4j have different different modules in it so if you see here i have a module for spring boot i have the bulkhead i have the uh, so spring boot 2 is for with the spring boot 2 version spring boot is spring 1 version you can put resilience 4j all which will bring all the dependencies into your project so as of now since i'm only dealing with circuit breaker i'll get the circuit breaker library for my project okay let me reload it and i'll go back to my main class what i'm going to do here is i'm going to implement this particular code service interface and i'm going to implement this particular method now this method is going to give us a code of a particular product so what i'm going to do is let me first create the object of this particular class okay and then we're gonna call it so one another thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a setter 
for the product names so I'm going to create the setter for product names and here I'm going to use that product name if and I'll need a getter as well so let me auto generate it rather than doing so much of work right I'll generate the getters and setters okay so let me say get product name equals let's say soap then return let's say 10 I want to generate some random values right so let's say 10 into math dot random okay okay so I'm going to return the value of this particular product and I'm going to generate some random number so let me see uh, random dot so I say new random dot next int and let me give I think I can give min and max okay let me give the bound as well let's say till 100 right so let me do the similar thing as well let's say if it is I don't know toothpaste I again do the same thing else if I assume that I don't have that inventory with me and then I'll throw a runtime exception from here I say product not available so far so good plain old Java thing nothing uh, too complicated okay now we're gonna call it uh, from our main class however there is one thing that we need to be make sure that uh, when uh, we want to uh, wrap around any method for a circuit breaker uh, you need to create some kind of a setup for that circuit breaker uh, uh, you need to create a setup for that circuit breaker uh, to wrap it around the circuit breaker right in short so what I will do is there are few steps that we need to follow if you want to wrap it around circuit breakers so first I need to create a circuit breaker configuration next I need to create a circuit breaker registry then I'll create a circuit breaker itself then I need to create a and then I need to wrap around my method in a supplier Java 8 supplier so and here you will understand why I have created this code interface right so let's create all these things and then we'll see how we can wrap it around our method right so for me um, I'll create the configuration first I'll creating a custom configuration so let's see what I'll need I need a sliding window so sliding window is basically what is the window size in which you want to evaluate uh, evaluate the failures of your method right so sliding window is of two types one is a count based one and a time based one so time based one is let's say uh, for example I say that in last one minute if um, threshold is exceeding whatever the configured value then you can you basically trip the circuit breaker and execute the fallback permanently right so that is what you need to do it so for my window size let's say I say my window size is 10 calls minimum number of calls is let's say 5 so after 5 calls it basically start uh, executing the logic for a circuit breaker and my sliding window size let's say I put a count based one right then what I say I want automatic uh, transition from open to half open I say yes I want it uh, what is the failure threshold 
I say 50 percent if it is going beyond 50 percent then you consider it as a consider as a candidate for evaluation of a circuit breaker so I can tolerate the 50 percent of the calls to go down but moment it is going beyond the 50 percent which means that my sliding window size is 10 but I have, if I till five failures I can tolerate but the moment I get the sixth failure I no longer tolerate it and I want to execute it I want to open the circuit breaker basically um, let's say permit number of calls in half open state let's say three and here you can uh, customize what are the exceptions you want to record what you want to ignore and all those things for now I'm not putting it I am just directly throwing a runtime exception right then I say once the circuit breaker is open how long you want to wait before you uh, move it to a half open state and all these states that I'm talking about right the, we have discussed this thing in my first lecture so it is basically bar, uh, internally implemented using a state machine so you have a open state closed state and half open state so once this uh, circuit breaker is open no new calls will be allowed onto the method which is wrapped in a circuit breaker right uh, once in a half open state the configured number of calls will be allowed so here I say three calls will be allowed if 50% of more than 50% of those calls are successful my circuit breaker will close and it will assume that the service is healthy now okay so once it is open how long I need to wait right I say duration I need to wait like uh, let's say 10 seconds I think complaining because I think it's not detecting my java level okay now it should be fine okay so our config is ready next thing we need to do is circuit breaker registry so i'll create a circuit breaker registry similar uh, no fancy thing so i say circuit breaker registry and build a custom one again and you need to build a registry using a config so i say with circuit breaker config and the config is the one which we created in the first step okay so registry is ready now next thing we need to do is we need to create an actual circuit breaker object so I say circuit breaker so circuit breaker has to be created from a registry and I need to give a name for my circuit breaker so I say my custom circuit breaker so this is my circuit breaker right now the most important thing is how you wrap your existing method which is get quote how you wrap it around a circuit breaker and execute it so that's the most important thing so for that what we need to do is we need to decorate our method using a supplier so on a circuit breaker there are basically two methods so one is a decorate callable and the decorate supplier right so decorate callable is where uh, you need to pass it on the arguments to your method and the decorate supplier is where your method don't expect any argument so in our case our method is not expecting any argument so I'll use supplier and in a decorate supplier I need to pass a circuit breaker that's the first argument second argument I need to pass is a supplier and right? my supplier is basically a get quote so what I will do is what is my method object is this one and I'll pass it on the method reference that's it we are done I'll get a supplier object as a result my supplier is returning integer so I'll get the integer this is my supplier okay so supplier is ready and the last thing is to call this particular supplier call the method how you call the method uh, so if you have worked on a VAVR um, library right it gives you certain functional constructs to call the suppliers and all those methods so we'll going to use that thing or the residence 4G use it so for us try off supplier supplier and if it fails I want to recover from it so we need to create a recovery method now which is your fallback method so if this method fails what is my fallback strategy 
so I say create another method called as fallback right which I'm gonna return a let's say a static values okay so let's say and this is not returning any throwing any exception I say if nothing else is there just return zero okay now this is your fallback what it should do is as per the convention of um, residence 4j your fallback method should follow the exact same signature just to an extra parameter of an exception okay so it is following exact same thing, uh, convention it is also returning an integer with just one extra parameter which is your throwable object right so recovery method for me is code uh, service get fallback that's it we are done so at this particular point we should be ready to execute our method so for us what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a array of products first or list of products say list of string products either I say list list of elements okay let me first run five products only okay I'm on Java 11 there's no point putting Java in there right should be okay now okay so let's say I need soap I need toothpaste I need code for biscuit I need Pepsi Coke tea okay and let's get the codes for all of these so this is my product okay now we'll be calling this or getting the quotes of all these products right so let me move it inside my loop and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a setter right and this will be a product so I'm basically setting my product and I'm calling that particular product now what will happen is for first two products I have the code or I, my code uh, method should be able to give me a code back but but for the other four I don't have anything configured and it's going to start throwing an exception and once it throws an exception it should basically invoke my fallback and it should return a dummy value which is zero okay now let's do one more thing which is um, okay so let me call it and let's see how it works okay I'll run my main method the project is building up so give it a couple of seconds to build completely and let me print certain statements as well to make sure that whether we are in a fallback method or we are in a regular quote method okay so I say inside I am inside the quote method and here I say I am inside the 
fallback method quote fallback method okay so let me run it again let me see what is happening with this now if it still doesn't work I, yeah it is working okay now if you see now let's uh, put what is the product that we are evaluating as well right so that's also should be done now what what we are doing as of now is we are calling a code service once the code service uh, basically um, not able to evaluate certain attributes or there is some issue with that it will throw an exception once the exception is thrown it will call the fallback service so if you see the sequence of it so for the first two quotes which is soap and toothpaste no fallback method has been called right so starting from the third one the fallback method is getting called so method fallback method method fallback method method fallback method and the last one where is no method has been called directly you gone into the fallback method and I'll tell you the reason for that as well so let me do this thing we need to put a logger as well because I'm not able to see the standard loggers which is there uh, coming from the library so let me put loggers as well let me try to run it again okay so we have fixed our logger dependencies right so let me run it again so now it will be more clearer as in what is exactly happening so once I run it again let's see what are the sequence of events which has been happening here right okay so I'll go from the start so first we go inside our main method so that was success second one we go inside our quote method again so that's also was success so for the third thing we entered the method but there was no quote available so it throws a product not available runtime exception once it throws that we go inside the fallback method so let me put product name as well should be much more clearer okay let me run it again it's building and running now okay so for first time for the soap it worked fine second time for the toothpaste it worked fine as well for biscuits there was no code it started through an exception then for the biscuit one only it goes into the fallback method and here it worked for the Pepsi as well it goes into the fallback method here it worked for the coke also it goes into the main method first throws an exception it worked so all these here till this point of time the circuit breaker was into the closed state at this point of time if you see this event it is saying that failure rate has been exceeded right which means you have for us we are tolerating 50% of the failures right but the moment we go beyond this our failure rate has increased more than 50% of the number of calls and then it 
basically tripped the circuit breaker so once the value rate has been increased if you have seen that for coke there is no method or main method quote method has been called indirectly go inside the fallback method and for the t also indirectly goes into the fallback method which means at this particular stage your uh, circuit breaker was open and you are no longer would be able to uh, go and uh, you're, you no longer will uh, is able to go inside your main code method okay so if you want to see it in a debug mode which would be more clearer in this particular scenario what i will do is i'll put a debug points in both of these methods and then we'll see what is happening so i run it in a debug me me uh, debug mode okay this is my first product i come inside my coat method right so i am coming for soap so this should work fine and these events or these loggers that you are seeing because we have not put any uh, uh, event handlers for this one so at every point of time something happens it emits an event we are not listening for this event so that's why it says event is not published and in our next lecture we'll see how to listen to these events and ha do customize handling of these events as well but for this example i'm not doing it as of now so i can go here i can go quote method again for the toothpaste it should work so till this point of time no fallback method has been called so this should work fine so for the third one for the biscuit we don't have it available i'll throw runtime exception so moment i throw in runtime exception i will so it throws an error event i will go into the fallback method so i'm coming inside the fallback method now so i'll execute the fallback method for the next product again it will throw an exception and i'll go into the fallback method so again i'm going to the fallback method for pepsi so till this point of time i have two failures okay for the third one again i come inside my main method and i go into the fallback method right okay so this is how i told shown you how to find out how the transition has been happening and we saw in a debug mode as well how the uh, fallbacks are getting called right so let me do one more thing i'll put few more few more products basically i wanted to show you when the circuit breaker is breached what exactly happens okay i'll run it so it's getting built okay now here if you see event not permitted coming in so which means you no longer can make any new call for these particular methods now what we have seen uh, what we have configured is once the circuit breaker is open it will remain open only for 10 seconds before it moves on to the half open state so let me do one thing that once i get a t as a product name i will stop my thread for 10 seconds so the events that you're seeing which is call not permitted these events will not come now because it will automatically move from a open to a half open state uh, once the 10 10 seconds elapsed okay so what i will do in this particular thing is if if it is t then Then dot sleep. Let's say ten seconds. Oh, 
or let me not throw an exception at all i'll just wrap it around try catch okay let me run it again and this time we'll sh we should not be getting those call not permitted exception I think this is because we did it too early. It no, should not be for T. It should be for let's say Coke because at the time of T as a product, it is already been open. Okay, let me run it again. okay so till this time there is no call not permitted event is coming and it should not come going forward right we are not getting it if you see here we are not getting those for the last one we got it again because it again breached the threshold of number of failures okay but not for these things so this is explaining the concept of how the circuit breaker remaining in open and a half open state so i hope that is clear right now uh, so this brings us to an end of um, this particular lecture wherein i show you how you can um, use resilience 4j in a plain uh, java component without spring boot in the next series we're going to see how we can utilize it inside the spring boot project um, so if you are still stayed here till the end please go ahead and subscribe to it i am uh, it, it gives me a motivation to bring you a lot many these kind of uh, lectures for you uh, a lot of effort is going on for making these particular uh, videos so any feedback is highly encouraging uh, if you want to put any comments or uh, you want to give me some suggestions to improve my narration style uh, that's most welcome go ahead and put the comments into the description box and please give a big thumbs up if you like this video um, once again uh, go ahead and subscribe and press the bell icon thank you so much thanks for tuning in